Ridgeline High School Sports, a presentation of 104.5 The Ranch and CashValleyDaily.com. Brought to you by Adams Wealth Advisors, Great Basin Graphics, McDonald's, Logo Shop, Castellite, Napa Auto Parts, Planet Fitness, DD Auto Salvage, Cash Valley Auto Care, Les Olson Company, Logan Cash Rich Credit Union, The Cater Shop, Advanced Heating and Air Conditioning, and Cash Valley Daily. Now, it's time for the Ridgeline Riverhawks on 104.5 The Ranch. They really can put your logo on just about anything. That's what they do at the Logo Shop. Businesses, teams, booster clubs, school organizations, call the Logo Shop and have them show you the possibilities. The Logo Shop, committed to schools, teams, and youth groups. From what's happening in local political elections to breaking news to photo galleries and replays of the latest games. If it's happening in our community, it's on CashValleyDaily.com and the Cash Valley Daily app. Local, relevant news on CashValleyDaily.com. Here's today's hot, perfect tip. Don't follow extreme routines. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel any time. This is Dave Simmons, partner with the pros at Les Olson IT for all your office technology. Everything from copiers to outsourced IT services, think of LesOlsonIT.com. Les Olson IT. Your cash and buck. Welcome everybody to Ridgeline Basketball as the Lady Riverhawks are going to face off against the Payson Lions as we're in the semifinals of the 4A State Championship. I am down here at Utah Community Credit Union Center and I'm Mike side with downtown Tony Brown as uh, Terrell Baldwin couldn't make it down so I asked Tony, I pulled him out of the crowd and he was so gracious to join us on this uh, call that we're going to have here today. Tony, what do you know about the Payson Lions? Anything? Not much. I know they uh, are on, I think, a 13-game winning streak. Uh, they started off slow last night while I was watching and uh, happened to leave, and they came back and ended up winning, I think, by double digits. So, so they trailed at one point in that game against Desert Hills? Yeah, it was looking really rough versus Desert Hills in the first quarter. Well, these guys have some ladies on this team. They did finish the season with a 17-7 and overall record and a 10-0 region record. I think that's region 10. If I believe, I believe if, I, so. uh, if I'm right, ten, Region 10 down there in Utah County. Uh, these guys are led by Oakley Jackman. She averages 13 points and nine boards a game. All three of their leading scorers do a good job of rebounding. Chenzi Roundy averages 12 points and seven boards, and Quincy Matthews averages 11 points and five boards. The starting five for the Pace and Lions is Avery Roundy, number four, Chenzi Roundy, number five. Quincy Matthews, number 24, Oakley Jackman, number 25, and Kaya Barr, number 31. Starting for the Ridgeline Riverhawks is going to be number five, Emily Skinner, the leading scorer on the team. She's a junior, averages around 23 to 25 points per game, does it all for the Riverhawks. Also starting at forward is Macy Brown, number 22. She's a senior, leads the team in rebounding. Crashes the boards, plays down low, plays usually will play the other team's big, if not, not their big, their next biggest. Elise Livingston is number 23, another senior. She's the sharpshooter from outside, knocks down threes. She also facil facilitates the basketball and is a really good passer. Hallie Smith, number 25, also a guard, senior guard. She'll also facilitate quite a bit. Third in scoring on this team, I believe, if she's still there. And then Brinley Weiss. She will typically guard the other team's big, and she can knock down points from outside as well, as she's a really good three-point shooter. And Emily Skinner controls the tip. Whoa, baby. We got a phone call coming in, Brown. Better turn that down. Emily Skinner controls the tip to Hallie Smith. Hallie gets it back to Emily, and Emily knocks down the first points of the game in the form of a three-pointer. Yeah, that was just, uh, I'm not sure what happened on the defensive laps, but you better guard her because she's probably the best player in the state. If you're going to give someone space, it shouldn't be <laughs> Emily Skinner, and she makes you pay right out of the gates. 
as not only the best player in the states, one of the most highly recruited guards of her class in the nation, as she's a five-star right now, being recruited very heavily by several big five colleges. Not just big five colleges, but top of the league, top yeah, of the country, top big of the five nation, colleges. Yeah. <laughs> we got coaches coming in and out of the Ridgeline gym every game, it seems like. Emily with the ball in her hand up top by the about midcourt. Doesn't use the screen from Macy Brown and then gets to the baseline and a skip pass to Hallie Smith. Hallie over to Livingston. Livingston penetrates one Euro step and then drops it off to Brindley Weiss and Weiss misses the little bunny inside. Pretty good offense for the Ridgeline. Another good look as Payson turns it over, tries to force it down into the paint. Livingston in transition, gets into the chest of, that's Bunt Roundy. Doesn't get it to fall, but then it kicks outside to Emily Skinner as she knocks down another three-pointer for a 6-0 lead for Ridgeline. Yep, big offensive rebound for a second opportunity there by Brown and finds Skinner wide okay, open. Okay, I missed that. Macy Brown with the offensive board and the assist out to Skinner. And, and Payson turns it over again on the defense of Hallie Smith, and she'll, she will pester your ball handler <laughs> the whole game. From, from 94 usually, feet. <laughs> usually the entire court. Emily with it again in her hand. Skinner just crosses midcourt. Looking to get the offense set up again for the Lady Riverhawks. Now Livingston to the high post to Brown. Brown with a couple dribbles over to Weiss. Weiss back up top to Livingston. And then a bad pass by Elise is tipped out of bounds by Payson. That didn't look like it was going anywhere, even if it didn't get deflected. Yeah, it looks like uh, Payson came out in a little bit of a 1-2-2 two, two zone, kind of threw uh, the Riverhawks off, uh, off guard there. If there's one thing that can get to the Riverhawks, it is a zone defense at times. Livingston gets it into Brown and back to Livingston, and then Skinner in the mid-range. She finds Livingston on the kick pass, and Livingston knocks it down for a 9 nothing lead for the Riverhawks. This is about... The same way the uh, Dixie game went last night as the Ridgeline jumped, the Lady Riverhawks jumped out to a nice lead. Yep, they've shot three threes and made all three of them, so it's a good the start. The only miss they've had so far is a layup attempt. Go figure. <laughs> as they've made three threes and they've missed a layup. That time, that's uh, Oakley Jackman, their leading scorer, gets into the chest of Brindley Weiss as she gets a pretty deep into the paint. Weiss fouls her and puts her on the charity stripe, and Jackman makes her first foul shot. I think some people get confused with when they catch it in the post, you want to body them, and really you want to give them a little bit of space so that they can't tell where you're at and then can't use their body against yours to create those fouls. That's exactly what Jackman does on that entry pass when she gets in the post. She used her body against Weiss's to draw the contact and the foul. Sometimes you just pull the chair out from underneath yep. and they fall. Come on, we need some help here getting this one in. Skinner gets it into Livingston. This press is a little bit risky by Payson, but handled by handled by the Riverhawks. Now they got the ball to Livingston. On the wing, up high, into the high post, and that one's stolen away, well, momentarily, and then back to Brown. Brown up to Livingston. Livingston looking for the skip into the corner, gets it to Smith. Smith back to Livingston, and back to Smith, playing catch. The big skip pass to Weiss. And then they're going to reset up high. Get it to the high post to Brown. Brown back to Skinner. One little shot fake, and then gets to the mid-range and an offensive rebound, Hallie Smith. The guard is a good rebounder. She hustles nonstop. They swing it around the perimeter and find a look for Livingston. She misses the three for the fir first missed three-pointer for the Lady Riverhawks. And now Skinner and Smith are causing havoc in the backcourt. <laughs> For Payson. Got some carnage at midcourt. Yep. Brindley Weiss hits the deck, and Payson on the transition almost gets a layup to fall. And now tracked down by, that's Matthews. <laughs> Matthews turns it over and it's transitioned back the other way for Ridgeline, and that's an easy bucket for Skinner. Yeah, that was a heck of about 20 seconds right there. 30 <laughs> seconds with the three offensive rebounds we got. All missed shots, but giving us a bunch of opportunities. I looked down, and Payson had the ball. I looked back up, and Ridgeline has it. <laughs> So another turnover for the Lions as they're having a hard time with this pressure man defense that gets up in your face and in your space. And there's an example of it as Macy Brown gets in the space of John. Of, whoa, that was Matthews. 
Who knocked that down, Brown, right here, number, number five? Number five, yep. Yep, that's Chenzi Roundy. So she's the, the second leading scorer on this team, just behind Jackman. As Jackman averages 13, Roundy averages 12. She knocks down a three ball, and immediately the Payson Lions head coach calls a timeout, 11 to five, exactly halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, the last three came off of a what we thought was going to be a steal, turned into a, a loose ball, people scrambling in a wide open three that they knocked down. Yeah, Brown got into the chest of Math, or sorry, Matthews got into the chest of Brown and looked like she kicked the ball. Looked like she kicked it away. It got into the hands of a Lions player. I don't know if that was Roundy that picked it up, but immediately she chucked one up and it went in. And Payson, after all that, a handful of turnovers only finds themselves down six. Bridgeline will have the ball and Skinner will inbound on the Payson side of the court. Into Livingston. Back to Skinner. Livingston then will bring it across half court and get it back to Skinner. High post to Brown. Brown with the drop pass to Weiss. She doesn't really look for the shot as she was open. Now Brown on the baseline trying to find somebody, and she gets the skip to Smith. Smith up top to Skinner. Back in the corner to Brown. Little shot fake. Gets the player in the air, and then, oh, oh boy. Gets the contact. That was uh, uh, 31. That's Kaya Barr coming over on the help defense as Macy had beat her defender on the baseline. And then Barr met her right at the rim and knocked that one out of bounds on pace and it's going to stay in Ridgeline's possession. On a Wallace in the game and Sydney Zollinger in the game. Sydney Zollinger's going to check in and just raise right up for three, and that one's long. That was online exactly the shot that I think the coaches want for her. She, she can knock down the three ball. That would be, I'd say, her specialty is she's just a six man usually off the bench. And she uh, is not afraid to shoot it there. I like how she's shot ready. A little foul on, who was that, Brown? I think it was Elise Livingston. Livingston with the foul. Second team foul. Oh, boy. In the back door, a little curl cutter for pace and gives him an easy layup. Looks like Zollinger maybe got lost there. Pinned on a screen. A little back screen, just not enough talking by uh, the person screening. I'm not sure if it was Wallace who's screening or, or who it was. And this zone defense again causing problems for Ridgeline. And Livingston's going to turn it over. She just gets too deep into that double team, and there's nowhere to go, and she travels. As probably should have kicked that one to the corner a little sooner. 2.59 to go in the first, 11-7 to seven for Ridgeline. Kind of the same same song, different verse from last night. They got out to an early lead and then went quiet offensively for a few minutes, and the other team kind of caught back up. Yep. And the defense right now all over the Lions, making it tough to get anything going offensively. And then Brown, oh, with the defense on Barr, gets the missed shot and the ball back to Ridgeline. Skinner with it up high. Gets to the right wing, skips it over to Zollinger on the left wing. Zollinger to the corner to Livingston. Livingston's going to raise up and knock another three-pointer down. That's her second of the game. She has six. Yeah, that was a good ball movement, kind of a little bit of a set play there, but that's what the Riverhawks need to do against the zone is more ball movement, less penetration. I would 100% agree. You just got to move that ball, make the defense move, and Skinner with the steal and the layup and no foul. Looks like lots of contact, but they are kind of letting them play right now. I think as M, M did most of the damage. She kind of went into her. I, I don't think that she kind of was going into M as much as it maybe looked like. Jackman takes the brunt of that contact <laughs> as uh, Payson is going to launch for three. That's roundy. That's long mm. and rebounded by uh, <laughs> Barr. Barr gets it in the corner to number 10. That's Hales. Hales kicks it to the referee, <laughs> and that's out of bounds. <laughs> He's not playing on their team, at least yeah, not the, yet. The stripes isn't quite on the pace inside of the ball yet. I haven't started complaining about it yet. That's usually the first <laughs> indication that they're playing for the other team. 16-7. <laughs> uh, to seven. Payson doing a pretty good job of weathering the storm here. Not, not great offensively, but playing good enough defense to at least keep them in it holding Ridgeline to 16, and that's 
Yeah, that, well, did that go off Macy's hands? No, that went off no. Uh, the, that was uh, whoever was guarding the least there in that zone tipped, tipped it. it and went over Macy's hands. I'm telling you, the scouting report on Ridgeline is sit back in a 2-3 zone and just pray that they don't knock down a high volume of threes. Right now, Elise has two. Skinner has two. And Brown's going to maybe look for one. Nope, she pulls it back up top to Skinner. Skinner to Zollinger. Zollinger over to Livingston. Livingston's going to penetrate and kick to Skinner. And again, that's not the girl you want to leave open, but she misses. Yep. And on a wall, she's going to tip it out of bounds. Good look. I, I, really, that's the exact time you want to penetrate. When the defense is scrambling, you penetrate to a, a spot and you look for that open shooter. And usually it's a cross-court pass. When they're in front of you, you want to pass. When they're scrambling, that's when you want to penetrate and attack. And there was no one in front of Skinner that time, but she gets another steal and a pass to Li Livingston and then back to Skinner. Oh, wow. That was... Good sharing of the basketball right there between Elise and Emily, and a nice finish by Skinner through the contact. Yeah, it almost, the almost too much sharing there. <laughs> there. It really was. As they got so close to the basket, there's not a ton of space. Yeah, but worked, worked out in our favor that time. Somehow, Livingston gets it back to Skinner. There was Lions defenders there. They just couldn't scramble enough to stop Skinner from getting her... <laughs> Ninth or 11th point. Lions on the break now as they find Hales, and she picks up her dribble up top. Wallace now defending Jackman. Jackman turns it over to Skinner, and Skinner's racing with Livingston as an option. She finds her. Oh, boy. And Hales blocks the shot attempt of Livingston, but Livingston's going to go to the stripe for two. Yeah, just n another kind of a loose ball turnover, just loose with the, the ball handling and ends up in Riverhawks' hands. And you know what happens when they get a turnover, especially above the free throw line. It's layup time. They love to run. And at least Livingston was out front and Skinner found her. She wasn't able to convert the layup, but she did get the and one. Livingston knocks down her first, 20 to 7. 26 seconds to go in this first quarter. Misses her second, and Wallace fights for it, but Jackman rips it out of there. Skinner and Zollinger pestering Roundy in the backcourt. Now she gets it over to, I think, her sister, Avery Roundy. There's Chenzi Roundy and Avery. Avery gets it, wow, deep under in the paint and does a reverse layup, gets it to fall with a 20 to nine lead for Ridgeline. Livingston's going to take the last shot of the quarter, and that's missed. 20 to 9 through 1. A lot of turnovers for Payson, but when they did get opportunities to score, they weren't able to convert there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good thing for them. Uh, one thing I noticed is the little, their 1 2 2 half court kind of zone offense, they've actually got some decent length. And so I think that's caused a few issues for our Ridgeline offense. Well, and if there is one chink in the armor, it is our zone offense, I would say. Our offense against the other team's zone is where we have struggled. Wanted to let you know that uh, today's game of the 4A state championship is brought to you by Adams Wealth Advisors. Uh, Adams Wealth Advisors puts clients first under any circumstance. They want to understand and earn your financial trust. Visit AdamsWealthAdvisors.com. Also, Great Basin Graphics, custom T-shirts, detailed embroidery, and gra graphic designs that will get your business noticed. McDonald's sponsors our player of the game. Emily Skinner, Elise Livingston, putting their name in the hat as far as that goes with a pretty solid first quarter thus far. Work for McDonald's and let McDonald's work for you. Flexible hours, tuition reimbursement, plus meals and other perks. Logo Shop gets our uniform check. They're committed to schools, teams, and youth groups. Right now, Payson in the dark green, or is that black? I'm colorblind, Brown. That's I dark green. You see, think I, that's I black? I think it's black, because okay. I think there's a green trim. Well, it looks like black uniforms are really dark green. Uniforms with uh, white numbers, white lines across the chest. Ridgeline in their white uniforms piped in blue with hawks across the chest and blue numbers. Eight minutes to go. Oh, Oof, that was close. Almost backcourt. 
Payson. That's Roundy. Dri drives to the baseline, picks up her dribble, gets it to her sister. That's another Roundy. That's Chinsey Roundy to Avery Roundy, and she miss she uh, mishandles it and throws it out of bounds. Turnover, Payson. Skinner with the ball. Yep, Payson drops back to this 1-2-2 two, two zone. Yeah, here it is again. Kind of been giving the offensive ridge line some fits. A little bit of pressure. It's one thing when you play a zone. If you play that pressure up high, you can cause turnovers, which they do. That's Barr. Barr on the drive gets it into Roundy. Roundy gets her shot blocked by Jenks. And then Smith hustles for the out-of-bounds ball, and that's going to stay possession. Payson. Trying to catch up with these girls' oh, names that are out on the court right now. We have Roundy, Roundy. Barr, Jackman, and Matthews. So that's their starting five. Starting five on the floor for Payson. Wallace, Skinner, Weiss, Jenks, and Smith in the game for Ridgeline. Good drive that time by Jackman. The leading scorer for the Lions gets two points and a 20 to 11 lead with one minute into the second quarter. Skinner crosses half court and skips it to Smith. Smith looking to attack, gets to a wing and then skips it over to Jenks. Jenks inside to Wallace and she throws it away. Just to, you know, Weiss either has got a flash to that low block. I, I actually like the play from Wallace. Weiss just looks like she stayed too deep on the baseline and didn't uh, come to the hoop. Yeah, it was a little bit of a mixture because the bottom person of the zone collapsed like she's supposed to. And the, the actual correct pass would have been Hallie Smith was to wide the, open on the to wing. To the wing? Okay. Yeah, so opposite wing. Well, I'm never going to argue with downtown's basketball acumen because it's always right. That time a missed opportunity for the Riverhawks and a turnover. Now they're on the defensive side. That's Bar No, sorry, that's Matthews on the shot attempt. She misses the three-pointer. And Skinner on the rebound, does she just – mishandle it out of bounds? Uh, I think, I mean, there was three girls battling for it right there. She kind of came in late. and, and they I think call she foul? Just, no, just out of bounds. Oh, okay. So out of bounds on Ridgeline. Ball to Payson. Payson into Roundy. Roundy with the floater. And Payson making a game of this as they're only down seven. 20 to 13. Six to go in the, six minutes to go in the second. Smith with the ball up high. Gets it over to Jenks. Jenks with the skip to Livingston. Livingston looking for Brown in the post. Doesn't find it. Gets it up top to Smith. Around the perimeter to Jenks. Jenks back to Smith. There's the high post to Brown. Good ball movement by the River Hawks. And Smith takes a three and misses. Those are the shots you're typically going to get with this zone defense. And Ridgeline hasn't been able to knock them down out of the last few trips. Payson with the ball gets it into Matthews. Matthew, oh sorry, that's Jackman. Jackman going to work against Weiss and now gets it up to the Roundy sisters. Chenzi with it up high. Passes to Avery, I believe that is. Avery skips it over. That's Barr. Barr down low to Matthews. Matthews misses the bunny and then it's fought for and rebounded by Jenks. Oh, I'm struggling with these names of these lady <laughs> lions. I ain't gonna lie to you. Brown inside, no. easy money, but misses the layup. Those are the ones you can't really afford to miss when you get those easy layups in this zone. Uh, you got to make sure we take advantage of those. Yeah, you're not going to get too many looks like that that are that clean. And Macy Brown misses a point blank at the rim. Still 20 to 13, five minutes to go now in the second quarter. Stolen by Brown. Oh, Jeez. almost stolen, but not stolen. And then this is a defensive foul on Macy as... That was Matthews kind of, it was tipped away from Matthews by Brown. And then when Matthews regained possession, she kind of got some elbows flying. It looked like caught Macy in the chin, but they're going to call Macy with the bump. Yeah, she just got, I think she got leaning in a little bit, and so that's where the foul came from. Oh, boy. That's a missed jumper by Jackman. And it's rebounded by Smith. Now she gets it to Livingston. Livingston with the skip to Skinner. Ridgeline looking to break down this 1-2-2 zone. One dribble by Livingston into the paint to Brown, and she misses another layup by Brown. She's got frustration all over her face right now as that's the second layup in this quarter she's missed. 
We got four minutes to go, 20 to 13. Timeout, timeout pacing as they were right at the <laughs> right at the 10 second mark. They hadn't got the ball across half court. So it'll be interesting to see. You gotta probably pass this one into the front court, right? No, it's gonna the 10 seconds will start over with the oh, timeout. Oh, you tell a timeout, you get a fresh 10 on yeah. the old uh, get it across half court line, okay. I thought that was only a foul. No. Nope. But on a timeout, you get a fresh 10. 420, just under four, four minutes and 19 seconds to be exact. 20 to 13. Ridgeline has only scored five in this quarter? Were they 15 at the end of one? We'll get the official stats. I don't even know if they're five. I think they may have only scored. I don't even know if they've scored this quarter. The hell, they may not have. I can't remember. We'll get the official stats from the stat book at halftime and give you those stats. Right now, Ridgeline really struggling, struggling offensively. They're playing good enough defense to hold Payson down, but you got to be, you got to be a little nervous here from the lack of offense that Ridgeline's unable to put up against this one-two-two zone of Payson. Payson does have some good length out there. Yeah, and I'm not so sure that it's the offense because they're getting the looks they, they, are they looks. really want, and most teams would die to have. They're just they just they're haven't finished the last four or five of them. Roundy gets it over to Hales. Hales back to the other Roundy. That's Chenzi. Chenzi to Avery Roundy. Avery back to Chenzi up top. Skips it over to Matthews. Matthews looking to operate against Brown and attack. She turns it over as it's ripped out of her hands by Skinner. Smith now to Skinner. Easy layup. And those are the transition buckets that kill you if you're the other team. Payson turns it over. It immediately leads to points. And now the lead is nine for Ridgeline. Three minutes, three minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Skinner with another steal, and she's off to the races again as she skips it across. Uh, just kind of a bad pass from Skinner. She floated it. It looked like she intended that to go to Macy, and uh, Elise Livingston got her hands on it and tipped it out of bounds. So the turnover doesn't convert to points for Ridgeline, and it's still 22 to 13. Three and a half to go in the second quarter. Full court press by Ridgeline now in a man defense. They kind of back off just slightly. And that's number 20. That's and Anderson with the ball. Anderson gets it over to Roundy. Roundy skips it to her sister Roundy. And Anderson's just going to cast for three. She misses, but it's rebounded by Jackman. No, that was Matthews. Elise Livingston's out on the fast break. You call that a cherry pick, or are we good then? <laughs> might, have been good. A little, might have been a little bit, but I mean, you, we'll take it. When she's playing up high on defense and she sees her team offensive re or gets the defensive rebound, she takes off, and you yeah. better have somebody back there with her. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the transition defense I know I've talked about before in this uh, girls' basketball that generally doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen, and that time it breaks down for pace, and then Richland gets an easy bucket. And if they hadn't scored, they got four quick ones and now a turnover by Payson as they try to find a curl cutter in the lane. And there's nothing there for Payson. And it's going to go Ridgeline's basketball. 2.40 to go, 24 to 13. Ridgeline's built it up to an 11-point lead. Skinner with Anderson on her gets it over to Brown. Brown's wide open and raises up for three, rebounded by Weiss. We send to Skinner. Skinner skips to the corner to Livingston, and she knocks it down. Livingston with her third three of the game. And now Ridgeline's going to look to cause another turnover here, 27 <laughs> to 13. Yeah, they got good, good. I mean, not even really ball movement. It was one pass and a wide open shot, and then an offensive rebound, and that's where a lot of wide open shots come from. Second chance opportunity as Anderson, the newly inserted, Anderson is going to cast again, and she misses again. Skinner now pushes. One big Euro step in the lane, and it's an easy floater. She gets that close to the rim. It's all over, and she gets another bucket for the Lady Riverhawks, 29-13. Yep. They're, the pace is that now kind of went back to the Riverhawks. Favor, favor, for sure. Their, their favorite type of pace to play at. Yeah, they are getting into transition, and the defense for the Lions is not getting back. As they find Roundy underneath, she skips it to... Her, sis, her sister, Roundy, or cousin, I'm not sure. <laughs> Chelsea to Avery. Chenzi, actually. Chenzi to Avery. And now that's Chenzi. He's going to raise for three. Rebounded by Zollinger. She's got someone on her back. Now she dribbles it out of there. And it's knocked away by one of the Roundies. And they go down. 
That's Avery. She misses a layup. Chenzi misses a layup, and it's rebounded by Brown. Yeah, get Macy in there. <laughs> and Coach Jenks wants a timeout as it kind of gets a little hectic at times with these girls, right? The turnovers kind of get a little crazy. The rebounds get tipped and swatted. And Zollinger's either got some makeup smeared or some blood smeared. I'm not sure which. Probably makeup. <laughs> she came in a little hot and heavy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> As you've been staying down here with the team, I ain't keeping track of her. I ain't her keeper anymore. Not at least for the next couple of days. 29 to 13. One minute to go here. One minute and four seconds in the half. Ridgeline with a 16-point lead. The thing about Ridgeline, Brown, is does another team have enough offense that it can score enough points to stay with them? I see them play bad offense at times. They did it yesterday even. They have spurts where they just can't score. But the other team's not scoring either. Right. And that's... I mean, that's something we've talked about all year, regardless if their shots aren't falling at the time, at the moment. How long is that going to last? And can the other teams take advantage of that by scoring themselves? And usually the answer is no. Well, Payson hasn't been able to take advantage of it so far as they have a probably a dozen turnovers already in this first half. A lot of them forced by the feisty defense of this Ridgeline Riverhawks team. Skinner and Zollinger playing catch up top. Now Skinner tosses it over to Smith. Smith straight away skips it into the wing. Gets into the wing to Zollinger and back to Smith. Now over to, oh boy, that is, Jeez. oh my goodness, that's got to be some kind of foul. Macy Brown, sorry, I lost the call there. They got it down in the paint to Macy Brown. She got her arm grabbed. No call, it goes to Payson, then Payson throws it to Emily Skinner. Emily Skinner <laughs> plays for Ridgeline, and that's going the other way for an e another easy layup. Yeah, the, the play before, like, I think you're right. They grabbed Macy's arm, and then she thought they were going to call a foul. And they didn't call anything. And then she just point blank and missed another easy layup. <laughs> that one's short off the iron, rebounded by Zollinger. That, that shot was by Hales. Now Skinner's going to push over to Zollinger on the wing. That's long. Air ball. Rebounded by Roundy. Roundy. Oh, boy, attacks, and what a layup and a finish in between Zollinger and Livingston for two points for Payson, and Payson's going to go into halftime pretty excited about only being down 16. Yeah, I mean, it's about as good as you could have hoped to finish that uh, half with a missed three, wide open three, and then a fast break layup. Yeah, they got to start knocking down those shots. It looks like Livingston and Skinner, I want to say, are the only two that have made those three points made a shot from outside beyond the three-point line. They might be the only two people who have scored today. <laughs> well, I'm going to go find out. I think you might be right. I'm going to go find out. I'm going to collect some stats, and we're going to come back. We'll take a commercial break, and we'll be back with some halftime stats and some entertainment right after this. They really can put your logo on just about anything. That's what they do at the Logo Shop. Businesses, teams, booster clubs, school organizations, call the Logo Shop and have them show you the possibilities. The Logo Shop, committed to schools, teams, and youth groups. From what's happening in local political elections to breaking news to photo galleries and replays of the latest games. If it's happening in our community, it's on CashValleyDaily.com and the Cash Valley Daily app. Local, relevant news on CashValleyDaily.com. Here's today's hot, perfect tip. Don't follow extreme routines. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel any time. This is Dave Simmons. Partner with the pros at Les Olson IT for all your office technology. Everything from copiers to outsourced IT services. Think of LesOlsonIT.com. Les Olson IT. Your cash and Box Elder County McDonald's take pride in being part of our community. Your local McDonald's is hiring with flexible hours, tuition reimbursement, and great pay. Start your career today. Apply at careers.mcdonalds.com. McDonald's is an equal opportunity employer committed to a diverse and inclusive workforce. DD Auto and Salvage is going to pay you the most for junk vehicles. Get rid of your junk vehicles today. Pickup is available. DD Auto and Salvage in Logan. Call 787 1204. That's 787 1204 today. See store for details. 
RPMs raise your BPMs. Then get up and go. Go turn some heads. Go turn a wrench. Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Make it three years in a row. Advanced Heating and AC is honored to be Best of Northern Utah Gold Medalist. Thank you for your support and vote of confidence in their company. Advanced Heating and AC, online at advancedheating-ac.com. Great Basin Graphics has quality screen printing, detailed embroidery, and award-winning graphic designers. The right look, the right design, the perfect fit. Get noticed with GBG. Get your order in today for spring products. Google Great Basin Graphics for screen printing and embroidery. 966 West 400 North in Lo Welcome back, everybody, to the UCCU Center down in Utah County in Orem, where the 4A State Basketball Championships is underway. We're in the semifinals as Ridgeline is facing off against the Pace and Lions. We're at halftime right now, and Ridgeline has a 31 to 15 lead. I have about six minutes to go here in the half before the ladies will come back out. So we'll share some stats with you. I had Tony Brown on the call for the first half. He's been replaced yep. by Coach Terrell Baldwin. How many times can I, on a personal level, get to replace a Hall of Famer? <laughs> well, I don't know. Not very often. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. I, I, I told you last night, Nick, I love coaching that person. That I love coaching Tony when he was a youngster and uh, to see him on the game call with you today and then get to get to replace him. I'm pretty lucky. He's done a couple of calls with us throughout the year as Dave has been a little absent. Actually, Dave and I and him have – called games together as he is fun to have on the broadcast he his basketball acumen is as high as anybody you'll ever be around yeah. he and, has uh, a deep understanding of the game of basketball yeah and a really good uh person that can articulate it to others and coach it to other people because oftentimes people know the game really well but they aren't great at coaching the game tony yeah. is also great at coaching the game as these seniors a lot of them played for him growing up, and that's why they are the type of basketball player that they are at this point in their careers. But to go through some halftime stats with you, we'll start with Payson. Payson's led in scoring by Avery Roundy. She has six points, uh, four in the first quarter and two in the second. Chenzi Roundy, got to be a sister. She's their leading one of their leading scorers. She has five, three, a three-pointer in the – First quarter and a two-point uh, two field goal in the second quarter. Oakley Jackman is their leading scorer. She has four. She has two free throws in the first and a two-point bucket in the second quarter. That totals 15. So scoring by quarter, again, Terrell, we talked about it yesterday. They had nine in the first and six in the second for their 15. So unable to get double digits, again, as we've talked about in the past, Interestingly enough, last night we watched a game with uh, Skyview and Snow Canyon and, and only a couple of girls scored for Snow Canyon. I think it was three. Well, tonight with Ridgeline, only two girls are able to get in the scoring column as they've missed a handful of open threes and good looks under the basket. Macy being one of those, missed a couple of layups. Sydney Zollinger's missed a couple of threes. Hallie Smith has missed a couple of shots. So they're just not dialed in the rest of the crew. Yeah. But Emily Skinner and Elise Livingston are dialed in. They are carrying the load right now for the Riverhawks. And they're up 16 points. They're up by 16, so they're doing a lot, of, a lot of the right things on the defensive side, which are leading to transition buckets for Emily and Elise. Elise has had a couple of, of uh, outlets that she's taken off when she, I, when she sees her team get a rebound, mm -hmm. she's just jetted down the court, and there's no one home for pace, and it's an easy layup. Emily Skinner, on the other hand, has created a lot of turnovers on her own. Up here around midcourt, she's poked it away from the pace and lion ball handler and then taken it for an easy layup of her own. Emily Skinner right now in this ballgame has 19. Boy, that's a tremendous first half for her. 13 in the first quarter, 6 in the second. I've talked a lot about her behind her back since the game last night. And I don't know if her ears have been tickling or what, but I'll tell you what, I, 
was really impressed with her performance last night. Anyone who has a chance to come out and watch her play, I'd definitely come and do it, Nick. Well, I was talking to a gentleman that has no idea who Emily Skinner is, just knows she's a great basketball player, that he is running the shot clock down here for the UHSAA. Yeah. And uh, he wanted to talk to me about Emily, and he says she is the most unselfish person I've ever seen yeah. play basketball. Most stars just want to go out and score for them. They're out there for themselves. Yeah. Not her. She... She makes those around her much better. If there's one compliment I think that Emily would appreciate the most, it's that she makes her teammates better. And she is that type of player that does make those players not only more confident, she gets them open looks, she gets them open shots, she puts the ball where it needs to be. So, Yeah, I totally agree with you. One, one comment that I want to reiterate and back up with, with uh, what you just said about Emily. Last night I was driving home with – Joe Isaac, who's been a longtime basketball assistant, coached with me for a long time, been around the game since longer than Naismith, probably understands the game as well as anyone I know. And he said one of the unrecognized or un, uh, just, not, just one of those things that not many people appreciate about the Ridgeline girls is their unselfishness. That's probably their greatest strength. And not many people recognize that. You're, we're watching it. Joe and I are watching it from an outsider's perspective. And th that's one thing that we both talked about, how unselfish they are. They can't be clicking on all cylinders every game. Maybe that first half was uh, an illustration of that. But I'll tell you what, you watch them play game after game, and you can just th – that unselfishness, it's something that we just don't see in basketball today. Everything seems to be about me, 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 what's going to happen for me. But I'll tell you what, you watch that Ridgeline team, you watch this Ridgeline team, they're, uh, they're so unselfish. It's just a, a pleasure to watch them play. Well, it is a pretty close-knit group, and I know that Emily Skinner and Elise Livingston would like to have more people in the scoring column than just themselves, but that's how it is right now. Elise Livingston had seven in the first quarter and five in the second to get her 12. So Skinner with 19. Uh, Livingston with 12, that's how we get to 31. Scoring by quarter for the Riverhawks was seven. Oh, am I still? Okay, there we go. had a little music going. 7-10. Well, let's see. Skinner had 6, 12, 13. So they had 20 in the first quarter. It was, They were 20, I think, more than halfway through the second quarter. They didn't score for probably five minutes in the second quarter, and then all of a sudden they got, what they get? 11. They got 11 points in the second quarter, and it all came in about the last two or three minutes hmm. of that second quarter. So scoring by quarter, Ridgeline had 20 in the first and 11 in the second. Outscored Payson both times, and they're going to start with the ball at half as the second half gets underway. Payson will start man-to-man -man defense. Yeah, and they were in a zone primarily the first half. So interesting enough that they're going to come out in a man. This usually doesn't pan out well for teams. Livingston's going to race for three, and there you go. It starts the second half the same way it started the first with a three-pointer made, but this time it's Elise Livingston. Nice set play there called by Ainsley, Coach Ainsley Jinx. I think with the athletes that are on the floor, it's so hard to play man against this Ridgeline Riverhawks team, but Payson's going to try to do it. As a missed shot by Matthews is rebounded by Skinner, she skips into the corner to Livingston, and she's going to go for another three-pointer, but that one's missed. Rebounded by, that was Jackman. Jackman gets it over to Hales. Sorry, that's not Hales, that's Barr. Barr throws it to Elise Livingston. Elise is off to the races. A nice pass to Macy Brown, and she mishandles it. Turnover Ridgeline. So a turnover for each team here early in the second, sorry, third quarter. And now Roundy's gonna push into Smith. Kicks it up top to Barr. Barr going back to Matthews in the corner. Macy Brown knocks it out of her hands and that's gonna stay with Payson. So all five starters return to the floor to start the second half for each team. As the inbound play for the Lions gets it into Jackman. Jackman going to work against Wee. She dribbles it off her foot, almost out of bounds, saved by Roundy. Roundy gets it to the other Roundy, and she's fouled by Hallie Smith. 
There's Chinzy Roundy is five. Avery Roundy is four. That was Avery that got fouled by Hallie Smith. One thing we're seeing from Payson, Dave, is, or excuse me, Nick, is they are very strong with the basketball. They turn, they face up. They're looking to make something happen. We didn't see that last night from Ridgeline's opponent. Oh, and we got a, we got a That's shot good. clock issue. So 31 on the shot clock. We picked up right where we left off, Nick, <laughs> with the shot clock I scoreboard I mention, issues. I, I know the guy running the shot clock, but uh, no harm, no foul, as we are going to get back underwear. 34-15. Did you recognize 19. any of these officials? Not to, no, not today. You I haven't don't. called anyone nope. out yet. I haven't yet. called anyone by name. And it's actually been, you know, there, there's been a couple of missed calls. But that's a travel <laughs> by Roundy as she gets up in the air and uh, comes back down with it. Been a couple of missed calls, but I'd rather have a missed call than a, than a real bad call. Yeah. Like, uh, I feel like you miss a call or you kind of let them play. I love it when officials let, let us play. play. Yeah, yeah, I would rather let them play than, than be so tight that you're blowing your whistle every 10 seconds. Pace him back in the zone. Back into a zone, and Skinner is going to penetrate into the zone, and that's too easy when she gets that close to the rim. She hits the floater. Nice ball fake there by Emily Skinner to get the defense off balance. She has 21 in the game, and Ridgeline has a 21-point lead. 5.50 to go here in the third. Roundy's going to track that one down, and Payson wants a timeout. Ridgeline on a 5-0 run to start the third quarter. Two and two, just two minutes and some change into the third. 36-15. Uh, Want to mention some of our great sponsors: Logan Cash Rich Credit Union. If you're student, if you're a student of the Logan Cash Rich or Logan Cash or Rich School Districts, you can get paid for good grades. Also, Les Olson Company. Our good friend Dave, the Cinnamon Bear Simmons, will get you a free network assessment at lesolson.com. d and Salvage for uh, Cash Valley's number one place to get the most for your junk vehicles and scrap metals. Pickup is available. Call 787-1204. Did Dave fake another injury today? I don't is that know where what is? happened to Dave. I, I've quit worrying about him. I can't, I can't keep up with all his fake injuries. He does yeah. it in golf, too. When he knows he's going to get beat, he starts dodging me. Oh. Comes up lame with a torn tricep or something. I'm surprised we haven't got a picture of him down in Palm Springs playing golf or something. I uh, wouldn't be surprised. He's not here. We know that. We miss the cinnamon bear. The sultry sounds. Payson's going to inbound the ball on the, on the right sideline just in front of uh, the administration where all the special people sit. Yep, right over there by uh, Coach John Wardenberg representing okay. BYU women's basketball. Well, there you go. Payson gets it into Roundy. Roundy into the high post to Matthews. Matthews to oh, Chenzi nice. Roundy. And that's just a nice little backdoor cutter by Chenzi nice. to get Payson on the board here in the third. High post to Brown. She kicks in the corner to Weiss. Weiss knocks down a three. And Ridgeline answers with a three-pointer. That's Weiss's first points of the ball game. As someone other than Livingston and Skinner has finally scored to crack the ice here. Roundy with it up top. She gets it to Matthews. Matthews in the corner to, that's Barr. Barr still has it. Gets it over to Roundy. Chenzi Roundy dribbles to the high post and kicks it over to Barr. Barr now up high to Avery Roundy and she's fouled by Hallie Smith. And that's going to get Sydney Zollinger off the bench and checked in for Smith here. I think that might be her third. Sydney Zollinger in the game. Also for Payson, number 10, that's Hales. Payson. Hales is going to raise up for three as she gets a pass from Roundy, and she knocks it down. So newly inserted. Emmy Hales knocks one down for Payson. Zollinger gets in a low post to Brown. Brown skips it back to Livingston. Livingston in the corner to Skinner. Back to Livingston, tries to oh. skip it in the corner to Weiss and turns it over. Skinner then picks Roundy's pocket and she's gonna go to the rim. No foul there, at lots of contact, that's double dribble. Yep. Yeah. Another turnover for Payson. 
as Barr turns it over on the double dribble. Great heads up there by Emily Skinner. Just couldn't finish at the rim. Maybe one of those rare times that she's not able to finish. She was a little strong with the layup attempt. Threw it from the right side and it missed on the left side. And maybe received a little bit of contact as well. It looked like there was some contact, but nothing called. Zollinger gets it over to Skinner. Skinner there we down go. to post into Brown, and Brown's going to go into the chest of Jackman and draw the foul in the two foul shots of Macy Brown looking to get on the board. One thing, when Macy catches it there, her first look, if she would go opposite, she's going to have a baseline cutter cutting right to the rim, have a wide open layup. Yeah, with that zone, but that's one thing I haven't seen Ridgeline do a great job of is flash to that other side. Brindley Weiss had an opportunity, and Ane Wallace passed to where she thought she was going to be, mm -hmm. and she wasn't there, threw it out of bounds. Macy Brown misses both free throws, yeah, Payson, and it's 39-20 for Ridgeline. Payson's doing a nice job of guarding, that, guarding Ridgeline in that high post area. Oh, that one's tipped away by Zollinger, but, re, but gathered back in by Roundy. Roundy up top to Jackman. Jackman looking to operate against Brown. She gets it to Avery Roundy, and Avery gets it over to Barr. Barr in the corner finds Avery Roundy on the cutter, and she misses a layup, but Chenzi rebounds it, and that's good for Payson. Chenzi's really come out to play tonight. She's leading them in points, I believe, for Payson, as she had six. Oh, Avery had six. She had five in the first. Nice. But Macy Brown with a nice dribble drive, and she gets on the board for her first two points of the game. Nice job by Macy, 41-22, 19-point lead with three minutes to go in the third. Avery Roundy up, hop, up top to Hales. Hales gets it over to Barr. Barr swings it back to Avery Roundy. She gets to the elbow and picks up her dribble. Gets it back up high to Barr. Barr with Emily Skinner all over her, hands it off to Roundy. Roundy to Chenzi Roundy. She's going to cast for three, and that's just in and out. That's going to go off Payson and go possession ridge line. And now some more subs come in as Hallie Smith, Ane Wallace, and McKady Jinks are all going to check in here as Macy Brown, Brindley Weiss, and Elise Livingston are going to take a seat. Emily, oh, Emily Skinner with a bad pass, but it's gathered back in by Hallie Smith. Oh. Another bad pass is tracked down by Zollinger. Jenks skips it in the corner to Wallace. Wallace is going to attack this zone defense, and her shot's blocked by Barr. Barr with the good defense. Now Skinner's all over Roundy. Roundy handles the pressure, gets it across half court, now looks for her offense. Gets it to Barr, Barr to Hales. Hales finds Matthews. Matthews attacks, kind of a high dribble, and is fouled by Wallace. Might have got away with the carry there. Yeah, a little bit of a carry on her way to contact to Wallace. Nothing called but the foul there. A 19-point lead for Ridgeline, 41-22. So Payson sitting at seven points in the quarter, looking to get to nine here, and they do. Well, eight, eight. with the made free throw by Matthews. Checking in the game. Oakley Jackman. Jackman is going to check in for Barr. Kaya Barr is going to take a little bit of a break because it looked like she kind of caught a knee in the stomach from uh, Ane Wallace on that last possession. And Matthews knocks down her second to give Ridgeline a 17-point lead, 41-24. Ridgeline with the ball. Jenks with it up high, gets it to Skinner. Skinner in the corner to Smith. She's going to chuck for three, and that's no good. Rebounded by Skinner. One dribble, almost throws it out of bounds, almost throws it away, but it's tipped out of bounds by Payson. Great Rich example there of Emily Skinner probably overpassed there. She could have taken one dribble and scored it at the rim. She was right in the middle of the key, and there was no one in front of her, but she gets it on the inbounds play right in the middle of the key, and that's too easy. Yeah, catches it high and keeps it high and scores it. Yep. Easy money for Emily Skinner. She's well over 20 and on her way to 30 points in this ball game. 43-24, 19-point lead with under two to go in the third. Payson with the ball, roundy up high. Gets it down to Matthews. Matthews tries to bounce pass on the baseline, and that one's out of bounds off Jackman. Jackman's slow to get off the court. Boy. As uh, I'm not sure what happened there. She's kind of grabbing her side. like Contact she got with Wallace. 
dead leg or a little side ache. I'm not sure what happened. Skinner beats the pressure from Payson relatively easily and goes coast to coast on a charge. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're not going to get my opinion on this one. But Emily Skinner's charged for the call as she goes one side of the court to the other and goes up for the layup. A lot of contact there. And the turnover for Ridgeline. Jackman's going to check out. And Barr's going to check back into this game. Full court press here by Ridgeline. A lot of pressure on this ball handler as Barr is trying to get it across half court. She does and spins back to the middle. Gets it over to Roundy. Roundy, Roundy in the corner to Hales. Hales brings it back up top with her left hand and then picks up her dribble. Deeper in the corner, that's Matthews. Matthews trying to work against Skinner. No good at the mid-range, rebounded by Jenks. Jenks rips it out of there and gets fouled. That's going to be Payson's second foul, and I hear the Payson faithful complaining about the foul. Yeah, strong rebound there by Jenks. Looked like she did a good job of just ripping that one out of there and hanging onto the ball. Tried to get it to Skinner, but was fouled in the process. Ridgeline ball with one minute on the clock. 19-point lead, 43-24. Smith to Jenks. Jenks in the corner to Zollinger. Zollinger back to Jenks. Into Wallace in the corner. Oh, mishandled pass. That was a good pass by Howie Smith. Great ball movement there by Ridgeline. Unfortunately, resulted in a turnover. Uh, Wallace had got it in the corner and had a nice bounce pass to Smith on the baseline. And Smith bounced past it into the center of the key to Skinner. And she's unable to handle it. But now Payson looking to push as an easy easy bucket as Roundy. You don't see that very often. Hallie Smith getting outrun down the court by Roundy. And an easy layup for uh, Payson giving Ridgeline a little of their own medicine. Jenks with it up high, a skip pass in the corner to Skinner. Skinner back to Smith. Smith in the corner to Zollinger. They get it back to Smith in the corner, and she goes baseline. Gets it to Zollinger for another three-point attempt. She misses again. Sydney Zollinger struggling from the field so far this half. Unable to convert, but Payson turns it over, and Skinner's going to get to the rim and gets hit in the face, and nothing called. Now Boy. Payson again. Trying to push, nothing happening in the end of three. Ridgeline's gonna take a 19 point lead, so they kept the margin. Oh, they widened the margin by three. They had a 15 point lead at half. They got a 19 point lead at the end of three. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. They really can put your logo on just about anything. That's what they do at the Logo Shop. Businesses, teams, booster clubs, school organizations, call the Logo Shop and have them show you the possibilities. The Logo Shop, committed to schools, teams, and youth groups. From what's happening in local political elections to breaking news to photo galleries and replays of the latest games. If it's happening in our community, it's on CashValleyDaily.com and the Cash Valley Daily app. Local, relevant news on CashValleyDaily.com. Here's today's hot, perfect tip. Don't follow extreme routines. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel any time. Welcome back to the UCCU Center down here in Orem where the Lady Riverhawks have built a 19-point lead through three quarters. And they're going to go into the fourth quarter up 45-26 to against the Payson Lions as the defense has been stifling. Payson, however, was able to put 11 points on the board in that third. So, T, so we, there's your double-digit quarter. Yeah. Broke the streak. You know, Payson's doing a nice job of keeping that ball moving. And they have secured the ball better than most teams. I mean, I know they have a hand, um, probably more than 12 or 15 turnovers, but 
Ball handling wise, they're better than most, and I think that's what kept the score relatively close. The shot by Barr is missed, but rebounded by Hales. That's missed again, and then that's stolen away by ha Hallie Smith. As she comes from behind one of the Payson players, she tries to push, gets it down to Livingston, and Livingston travels. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't know what some of these calls are, but I, I have a t the most, I have the worst angle possible on that footwork by Livingston, but she takes an extra step before she dribbles, and now they inbound to Roundy. Roundy's going to bring it across half court with pressure in her face by Jenks. They get it in the corner to Barr, kind of on the wing to Barr. Barr goes back up top to Matthews. Matthews with the dribble with her left hand and finish with her left hand over Weiss. Nice finish there by Payson. First points of the quarter go to Payson. Now Smith's going to slow it down and stay up high. She gets it over to Livingston again, about 10 feet from the three-point line. Back to Smith in the quarter to Jinx. Now down low to Brown. Brown's going to skip it across court to Livingston. That's missed, short. That's rebounded, fought for by Brown, but out of bounds on Payson. Interesting to see how high Payson is extending that 2-3 zone. Yeah, they did. They've done that a little bit. When they haven't been in man, they've been in an extended one. It's almost a one-two-two, two, and they kind of get up in your space, which we didn't see out of Dixie at all last no. night. And there's Howie nice. Smith for three. The inbounds to Howie Smith, and she knocks down. I think what is her first two, first three points of the ball game. So more girls getting in the scoring column for Ridgeline, which. The first half was all Emily Skinner and Elise Livingston. Now Skinner's all over Barr, and Barr hands it off to Jackman. Jackman gets in the corner to Matthews. Matthews is going to attack. She misses the mid-range jumper. Little bunny just above the restricted area. Rebounded by Weiss. Weiss to Livingston. Livingston in the corner to Smith. She's going to raise for mid-range, and that's just in and out. Rebounded, though, by Brown. Brown back up top to Livingston, back to Brown. Brown's going to dribble with her left hand into the lane. Get it to Livingston. Livingston back to Weiss, and then they finally find Skinner. Skinner's going to reset the offense with 20 seconds on the shot clock back up top to Livingston. Livingston calling for a ball screen, gets it from Brown. Not a lot of resistance from Payson. They just switch. Livingston with the ball again, dribble drives, and she turns it over. Now Matthews is out to the races, and Hallie Smith does a good job of getting back, but a nice finish by Matthews, and they get this lead back to 18. 48 to 30, five and a half to go here, and I agree with you, T. There's a little fatigue on those faces, and there's a little bit of uh, bad ball handling that we've seen here tonight, more turnovers than normal. I wish we had the, the university stat keeping. That would be yeah. very interesting to see. Um, what the stat lines look like for some of these girls and, and the teams overall, especially in the turnover category? Yeah, I think Payson's doing a really good job of extending their passing lanes. Ridgeline girls need to maybe take a little bit of a penetrating step or penetrating dribble, make a quick pass, keep that ball re reversing like they have been. But Payson's doing a good job of making those passes just a little bit longer. When you do that, you're more likely to turn the ball over. Payson 17 and 7 overall on the season, 10 and 0 in Region 10 play. So the Region 10 champions facing off against the Region 11 is is the uh, like Tooele Region. Is that Region 12 then? I believe. Yeah, I believe so. Utah County's Region 10, Tooele County and Park City, and that's Region 12, and we're Region 11. Is yes. that how that all works? Yes. Okay. Well, either way, if I, you know, if there's one thing I'm good at on these broadcasts, it's saying stuff that is incorrect. <laughs> As yesterday, I mentioned that Elise Livingston's going to Dixie Tech, which I call it Dixie Tech. I know it's Utah Tech. But she's actually going to UVU. She's going to oh. be playing on this court next year. Nice. Oh, that's offensive. And, and it looks like, to me, Elise is trying to skate by. Elise was on a fast break, dropped a pass to Brindley Weiss, and Jackman took some contact. Yeah, I don't know. You rarely see a jump stop anymore. She took it way past the what I call the decision line. Once you get past the de decision line and you have contact, who knows what can happen. Yeah, the, uh, the official determines that one's offensive variety is uh, another turnover for Elise Livingston. 
And now Skinner with the deflection on the bar pass, but Roundy tracks it down. Hallie Smith giving Roundy all sorts of grief up high, and that's offensive. That's an illegal screen on Payson. So a turnover Payson, back-to-back turnovers after the timeout. Just over five minutes to go. Ridgeline with an 18-point lead, 48-30. to The starting five for the Riverhawks on the floor. Definitely a lackluster performance offensively by the Riverhawks as they scored 66 last night. Probably not going to get to that mark with five minutes to go here in the fourth. Smith with it in the corner. Tipped pass. No, no foul on the contact from Jackman. And now Skinner's after it, and she causes a turnover. Smith tracks it down, and Skinner's going to raise for three. In and out. Rebound. Hales. She dribbles it off her foot, but is able to get it back. And now... Payson is having fits with this full court press. This is going to be a 10 second violation right there. Yep, another yep. turnover Payson. Nice. I was watching the clock and I, the uh, urgency that Roundy was bringing the ball over, I knew she wasn't going to cross half court before that 25 seconds hit mark hit. Yeah, I don't think any of them were aware of the 10 second count in that back court. That full court pressure by Ridgeline can give you a lot of grief and now Hale's going to guard Smith up high. They get in the corner to Skinner. Skinner back to Smith, and they just play catch. Now high post to Brown. She gets tangled up with a Lions defender, and they're going to call a foul on Hales. Yeah, That's interesting that Ridgeline isn't bringing someone along that baseline. So when Macy catches it there at the high post, she can look opposite for a dump off pass. We'll that, look for that. That's that is wide one, open. One area that I would say the Ridgeline Riverhawks, Lady Riverhawks, struggle the most is against the zone defense with their zone offense. They do have times when they struggle getting a look, but there's nice. a great look at the elbow by Hallie Smith. Boy, In, she has a nice touch. Beautiful shot by Smith as they inbounds it to Brown, and she just gets it to the high post to Smith, and there's no one home for Payson. Now Roundy up high, gets it into Matthews. She's been pretty good in this second half, but she misses, and it's rebounded by Brown. Brown to Skinner. And Skinner's going to get to look to get her offense going here. She gets in the corner to Livingston. Back up high to Skinner. Down low, and there's your cutter oh. that you mentioned, T. Yeah. There she is. Brindley Weiss gets behind the pace in defense. Slides along that baseline and presents herself. And there was no one there as the wing had to respect the three-point shooting of Elise Livingston and Hallie Smith. And now Payson goes to work with Jackman. Jackman misses a layup and another rebound by Brown. She skips it forward to Livingston. Livingston stops at the three-point line and then down to Brown. Brown with a couple dribbles in the lane, finds Skinner, and that's not the girl you want to leave wide open, but she misses long. And that's going to stay in the possession of Ridgeline as Brindley Weiss did a good job of keeping that one alive. 40, 52 to 30, 22 point lead, three minutes to go. You ever feel like these games are closer than they actually are? Absolutely. It feels like Payson might be down a possession or two. But <laughs> and with the excitement that I've heard from their crowd, it sounds like a two sometimes, yeah. but uh, they're only down 22 with three minutes to go. Skinner with a little penetration and then picks up her dribble. Finds Brown right in the middle of the lane, misses the bunny, and then she gets tied up and commits the foul. Macy's had a rough day offensively here so far. She's missed a handful of little point blankers, and that's another one that she'd great, like to have back. Great example of unselfish play there by Emily Skinner. She could have easily raised up on that mid-range jumper, dumped it off to a wide-open Macy Brown. Macy just misses the little bunny in the lane. Under three minutes now, 22-point lead for Ridgeline, 52-30. Roundy with it up high, going against Livingston. She drops it off to her sister. That's Avery Roundy. Back to Chenzi Roundy. Chenzi gets the entry pass, oh, nice. forces it to Brown, and then she steals it. Oh, boy. Timeout, Ridgeline. Macy kind of tipped it away, and Elise Livingston got it, and then immediately the Pace and Lions were all over her. And Coach Ainsley's Jenks sees that her player's in a little bit of distress and calls a timeout to get things uh, set back up, and it's a 60-second variety, so a full minute timeout. What do you think about the, uh, we get to do the Green Canyon uh, Leighton Christian game. Those two teams have matched up 
already once this season, and Green Canyon was victorious in overtime. Yeah, it's going to be a great game, Nick. I think uh, I, I think Green Canyon's playing with a lot of momentum right now. A lot of confidence in that yeah. team as well. As Logan Brown, like you say, has got those boys playing at a high, high level. Yeah. They're I, our only Region 11 team in the boys' classification left. Yeah, I really like it, the way they played yesterday. I'll tell you, I just – they just kept their poise about them, and I know that obviously they're playing an a intra-valley team and so on, but I can't tell you how, uh, how great of a game that was yesterday for those two teams, and obviously the Ridgeline fans would have liked to have seen their team come out on top, but as far as representing our region, we've got a great boys team representing our region, which will be Green Canyon, and if it, was, if it would have been Ridgeline, that would have been a re great representative as well. Both very evenly matched teams. Ridgeline was able to win both region play games. And then the one that mattered, the quarterfinal game, was won by Green Canyon. Ridgeline breaks the press and then forces one. Brindley Weiss throws it away. Turnover Ridgeline. Ball back to Payson. And now Jackman is pushing. She kicks it out to Hales. Hales is going to slow it down just momentarily and get it over to Roundy. Roundy up high, gets it to Chenzi Roundy, and she's going to launch. Whoa. That's short. Rebounded by Weiss. She gets it to Skinner. Skinner behind her back, and now she's going to attack. She gets fouled, and she's going to the line. Sydney Zollinger checked in the game for Hallie Smith, and now Hallie Smith runs to the scorer table, and she's going to check in for... The way Emily Skinner creates in the open court is something we just don't see every Her day. Her ball handling skills are next level for sure as she is a long guard. She's been playing point guard this year for the River Hawks, but she can play about anything if you need her to. As Hallie Smith's going to check in for Brindley Weiss and, and Matthews is going to check in for Hales. Has pretty good fight out of these Pace and Lions. They find themselves down by 24, but they've definitely given Ridgeline one of the better games that they've had over the course of the last couple of months. If you can believe it or not, a 24-point game is relatively close for these girls. Jackman with it down in the paint. She leaves that one short, and it's rebounded by Skinner. Skinner pushes across half, across half court, then kind of slows down. Over to Zollinger. Zollinger in the corner to Livingston. Livingston, couple dribbles, and then down the baseline, and she's pushed by Matthews. A little bit of a hold, a minute and a half to go, 54 to 30. 30 points is probably one of the more, is one of the higher points total as well for a team as the inbound play to Holly Smith, and now you go up top to Skinner. Skinner's got a fresh 35. Over to Livingston, Livingston up top to Zollinger. Zollinger back to Livingston, and Ridgeline's really slow in the pace. Playing catch up top, Zollinger and Livingston. Now to the corner to Skinner. Up straight away, Skinner, or Livingston, and that one's short and missed. The heat has kind of worn off Elise Livingston and Jackman She's out of bounds. Throws it to a teammate who just got too, simply too deep on that fast break. She had her early, but her head was down. Yep. As she was uh, unable to find her teammate soon enough, and when she did, she was standing out of bounds. One of those fundamental principles, Nick, it's hard to pass the ball with your head down. Yes, it is. You got to get the eyes up. You got to see what's in front of you. As Hales is going to check in this ball game for Barr. Ridgeline has the ball. One of my biggest questions, Nick, is when we do post-game stats, uh -huh. will we have music? Yeah, absolutely. We didn't at half, and I forgot it was my fault. That mid-range jumper's missed by Hallie Smith, but we will have some stat music. And now that's Hales. Hales, and that's got to be a charge, right? Yeah, she would just stand right there. See, I just think that's too deep. Yeah. It's too deep for the safety of both the players. Yeah, I was speaking with veteran official Rick Thorne this morning about that same okay. thing. Uh, what based on our, our discussion, Rick agrees based on safety, a safety issue, that's probably should be something that we see rather relatively soon in high school basketball. I saw my buddy Matt Barker over that I was talking about on the air. Yeah. I saw him after the game, and I was talking to him if that's any changes that they're looking to make at the 
at the national level, and he says yes, he thinks it will happen within the next couple of years. I sure hope it does. Because as they get that deep, they're, they're jumping into the air. You want that charge to be far enough away from the basket that the player is still on the ground, and they're not in the air when yeah. someone comes in and takes their legs out from underneath them. Yeah, you're exactly not, right. Not saying Livingston did that, but she's too close to the basket to be awarded an offensive foul. As uh, Ridgeline, she's going to run the clock out here, I would imagine. Get a shot. Skinner over to Livingston. She's going to launch for three, and that's long. Rebounded. Tipped away by Zollinger. It could have been rebounded by Skinner. But uh, 13 seconds, 54 to 30. This one's all over but the tears, as my friend Dave Simmons likes to say. As it's unfortunately going to be the end of pace and season as Ridgeline Riverhawks were kind of all over them defensively, causing all sorts of turnovers. There's a block shot by Skinner, and that's the end of the game. That's how this one's going to end. 54 to 30 in favor of the Lady Riverhawks. Another dominating performance. They only won by 24, T. They won by 42 last night. 42, 44, I can't remember, but 24 point wins, a 24 point win. I guess you move on, right? They never, it never felt like Payson was in the game. They didn't trail at one moment in the basketball game as Ridgeline jumped out to an early lead on the back of Elise Livingston and, and Emily Skinner. They both had all the points in the first half. There was more contribution in the second half from other players. But, you know, a 24-point victory, you got to feel good. It wasn't your best game. Right. Tomorrow, got to be your best game, right? Yeah, anytime you can advance in the state tournament in a Final Four opportunity and, and not, not play, play your, your best, best game, things have, been, things have gone pretty darn well for you. A pretty good defensive effort by the Lady Riverhawks. We'll come back with some stats. Take a quick break right now. We'll definitely have some stat music for you. So we'll be back in about mm, three minutes to give you some final game stats and final thoughts. Be right back. They really can put your logo on just about anything. That's what they do at the Logo Shop. Businesses, teams, booster clubs, school organizations, call the Logo Shop and have them show you the possibilities. The Logo Shop, committed to schools, teams, and youth groups. From what's happening in local political elections to breaking news to photo galleries and replays of the latest games. If it's happening in our community, it's on CashValleyDaily.com and the Cash Valley Daily app. Local, relevant news on CashValleyDaily.com. Here's today's hot and perfect tip. Don't follow extreme routines. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel any time. This is Dave Simmons, partner with the pros at Les Olson IT for all your office technology. Everything from copiers to outsourced IT services. Think of LesOlsonIT.com. Les Olson IT. Your cash and box elder county McDonald's take pride in being part of our community. Your local McDonald's is hiring with flexible hours, tuition reimbursement, and great pay. Start your career today. Apply at careers.mcdonalds.com. McDonald's is an equal opportunity employer committed to a diverse and inclusive workforce. DD Auto and Salvage is going to pay you the most for junk vehicles. Get rid of your junk vehicles today. Pickup is available. DD Auto and Salvage in Logan. Call 787 1204. That's 787 1204 today. See store for details. If RPMs raise your BPMs, then get up and go. Go turn some heads. Go turn a wrench. Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Make it three years in a row. Advanced Heating and AC is honored to be Best of Northern Utah Gold Medalist. Thank you for your support and vote of confidence in their company. Advanced Heating and AC online at advancedheating-ac.com. Great Basin Graphics has quality screen printing, detailed embroidery, and award-winning graphic designers. The right look, the right design, the perfect fit. Get noticed with GBG. Get your order in today for spring products. Google Great Basin Graphics for screen printing and embroidery. 966 West 400 North in Logan. <laughs> Let's go, girls. You like my music, don't you, T? Oh, yeah, it's Come great. On. 
I thought uh, since we're playing against the Pace and Lions, you'd come I'm back with a little footloose. <laughs> I think I got going something in here for you. Let me see if I can find that. We are back for the post game, uh, 54 to 30. Ridgeline is victorious in the semifinal ladies state basketball playoff game as they faced off against the Pace and Lions and were able to come up with the victory. The, the way they got there, T, was on the back of Emily Skinner. Emily had 27 in the ball game, 19 in the first half, eight in the second. For her 27. Next leading scorer was Elise Livingston. She had 12 in the first half, just three points in the second for her 15. Hallie Smith had five. Brindley Weiss had five, both in the second half. And Macy Brown had two. Scoring by quarter for the oh boy. I can't believe I forgot this. There you go. Oh, there we go. Scoring by quarter for Ridgeline, 20 in the first quarter, 11 in the second for 31 at half, 14 in the third quarter, 9 in the fourth for 23 in the second half. That's a total of 54 in the game. So Emily Skinner with exactly half of all the Ridgeline points. On the other side for Payson, they were led in scoring by Chenzi Roundy. She had nine, five in the first quarter, or first half, four in the second half. Her sister, Avery Roundy, I'm only assuming that's her sister. That might be a cousin or a relative of some kind. Avery Roundy had eight, six in the first half and two in the second. Quincy Matthews, who I mentioned had a pretty strong second half, had all six of her points in the second. Oakley Jackman, who had four in the first half, had no points in the second half. So 17, 21, 27. I'm missing three points, darn it. That's 10, 19, 27. I'm missing three from one of the lady uh, Lions. I'm gonna go find out who it is. You talk to him just for a minute. Okay. All right, back at you with uh, Ridgeline stats. Emily Skinner with another outstanding performance. 27 points, like Nick mentioned earlier, half of the points. And he's back already with the total. So is Hallie Anderson. Sorry, missed that one. She had a three ball in the second half. Um, so that's a total of 30 for Payson. They had nine in the first, six in the second quarter. 11 in the third, there's that double digit quarter we haven't seen very often by the Lady Riverhawks defense and then four in the fourth. But this team is built on defense. It's yeah. not a, I mean, when I saw them lose two games against teams from Texas, it's because they had players we just were unable to stop. Our pressure defense was unable to hold them to 30 points. I don't know that there's a 4A team in the state that has the players needed to put the kind of points on the board that it's gonna to take to beat these Lady Riverhawks. And just so mentioned in those two games, Emily Skinner wasn't in there because she's pretty good on defense as well. She didn't play in either, she played, I'll say eight minutes in the first game, in the first half and then had a rough half time and didn't come back out. So hmm. um, the two times I've seen them lose games, that's what's happened. It's been a, it's been an, a, an offensive juggernaut that it takes to put the t kind of boards points up on this defense to keep you in a game. I mean, is Olivia Hamlin that juggernaut? I just don't think she is. So we're gonna probably find out tomorrow if, if Snow Canyon can get by Cedar, which they're getting ready to play right now. Yeah, I just don't see any way that anyone that we've seen play down here, Nick, can give Ridgeline any type of game at all they would have to play an almost perfect game and Ridgeline would have to be way out of sorts. Even tonight, they may not have been clicking on all cylinders. We saw a few turnovers. Uh, we didn't see them main, main, maybe not as sharp defensively, but I'll tell you what, they still dominated the game. It's and I'll, I'll tell you, I love watching it from a coaching standpoint. And also, like I mentioned earlier, from someone who hasn't watched them play a lot this year, 
I'm really impressed with their overall attitude, just the way they, they run and operate as a team. You've got some great character people on that team, and you can tell they have a lot of fun and enjoy playing the game of basketball together. There are some great girls on that team. Uh, five of them seniors they'll lose for this being their final season. But it's kind of interesting that you – are somewhat disappointed with a 24-point victory in a right. semifinal state championship you, game. Like, yes. you didn't play very well. That's the type of expectations that these girls have for themselves and their teammates is that we expect to blow people out. We don't. We expect to win by 35-plus. And, I mean, they did not play great, that's for sure. They're, I, I believe to have a the type of win that they expect to have in the next round, they're going to have to play much better. If they play the way they did, I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be a one-possession game come fourth quarter, but it could be a much closer game, 10, 9, 8, 7 points, and then all of a sudden you haven't been in this position for months. It's been months since Ridgeline has been in a one-possession ball game. Right. Since they played Lehigh. Sorry, Lone Peak, my Lone, fault. Lone, yeah. Since they played Lone Peak, have they been in a one-possession game? I want to say that was like their fourth game of the year. Rigby gave them a decent game, but it wasn't a one-possession game. It was a 10-point lead throughout the game. So, And that was early December. So, I mean, again, it's been a while. If someone can test this Ridgeline team, who knows? Yeah, I'll tell you. I think either one of these two teams that they're playing have some real deficiencies that Ridgeline can exploit. I don't see any team out here, but again, that's why we play the game. That's why you, you never play. know. You never know what could happen. I really like the fact, and I think that Ridgeline would have a little bit of an advantage for the fact that they already played this game. They're getting off their feet. They're getting a little bit of rest. They have the early game. So maybe just a tad bit more rest to get ready for that championship game tomorrow. Well, and they're definitely experienced. This is going to be their third state championship that they're advanced to in a row. Three years in a row. Two years ago, they lost to... Two years ago, they lost to uh, Desert Hills in the championship game at Dixie. Last year, they were able to be victorious over Skyview up at Utah State. And now this year they're going to face off against the winner of Snow Canyon and Cedar. If I was a betting man, which I'm not, I don't bet, Terrell, I would bet on Snow Canyon. I would say Olivia Hamlin carries this team to a victory and they get the dub in the semifinals. Yeah, I think Snow Canyon coming in, when I checked the line, they were a seven-point favorite. Okay, there you go. I don't know who I'd you want to, to take cover. there. i take them to cover. Well, thanks, Nick, for a great game call. We've got another one coming up here. We'll take a little breather and get ready to roll. You bet you. We're gonna watch Snow Canyon and Cedar play a game, and then we'll be on the we'll be on the Green Canyon against Leighton Christian semifinal boys basketball game in about an hour and fifty minutes. So we will talk to you then. Hope everybody has a great night. For Nick Zollinger or for Terrell Baldwin, I'm Nick Zollinger. Have a great night, everybody. This Ridgeline River Hawks broadcast has been a presentation of 104.5 The Ranch and CashValleyDaily.com. Made possible by the support of our sponsors, Adams Wealth Advisors, Great Basin Graphics, McDonald's, Logo Shop, Castellite, Napa Auto Parts, Planet Fitness, DD Auto Salvage, Cash Valley Auto Care, Les Olson Company, Logan Cash Rich Credit Union, The Cater Shop, Advanced Heating and Air Conditioning, and Cash Valley Daily. Catch the replay of tonight's game on CashValleyDaily.com.